Hi, my name is Paul Fulton. Uh, I work for the Association of Accounting Technicians as their um, Benefits and Services Manager. AAT are the leading uh, accountancy body in finance for um, those that work in the financial industry. Um, we are sponsored by um, a, a number of bodies, four bodies in total. Uh, that's ICAS in Scotland, ICAW, SITFA and SEMA. Um, we have around 120,000 members worldwide. That's made up of those that are in student membership, full membership and fellow membership. Hello, I'm Samantha Jewell. I'm the Professional Officer for Education Students for the Society and College of Radiographers. The Society and College of Radiographers comprises of two organisations really. The first is the Society of the Radiographers, which is our trade union side of the organisation. And there we provide advice and representation to our members, and that's through tribunals and hearings, etc. And for issues which they may have with their employers or with grievances taken out by patients, for example. Um, we do a lot of active lobbying for individuals and we have officers and representatives out in the workplace supporting individuals. And on the college side, we're involved in the professional education and um, actively promoting the profession, not only in England but also worldwide. Uh, we shape the healthcare agenda and we lead opinion on the professional issues of radiography. We set a lot of standards that are adopted worldwide and also that we pioneer new ways of working and um, I think that's quite a, a big part of our work nowadays. We have approximately 24,000 members. That includes around 250 overseas members, 2,500 student members and of course in the whole membership we have assistant practitioners, we have associate members and we have retired members. So we have a whole plethora of membership rather than just uh, those that are out there working in the clinic. This represents around 90% of the actual workforce of uh, radio officers within this country, which I think is a pretty high uh, membership rate. I'm Caroline Clements. I'm the membership manager at the Society of Trust and Estate Practitioners, also known as STEP. Our membership at STEP is predominantly international. We've got about 6,000 or 6,500 members in the UK, so England and Wales and we've got about 10,000 um, overseas. So we've got about 16,500 members at the moment. Um, our key locations are areas where there's obviously wealthy people that are putting their money. Um, so in Switzerland, um, Jersey and Guernsey are very big areas for us, um, but we're growing significantly in Australia and in um, the US as well. We've had good campaigns out there, which we've, in Queensland, for example, we've had um, 50, uh, 100% growth, so we started off with about 43 members and we've, we've doubled that in about six months, so that's brilliant. The levels of growth at the AT are, um, in, they go in peaks and troughs like in most businesses, but there's approximately about 5,000 new members elected every year. We do actually monitor the members that leave the AAT um, and their reasons are quite varied sometimes. Generally it's because um, they've either come up to retirement, although we are now offering life membership as an opportunity to them, but generally it is retirement um, or they've achieved a further qualification and they don't want to keep the two subscriptions running and have moved on to, to be with someone like uh, SEMA or, or ICAW or another association of body. Our 2009-10 report shows that we had approximately 700 new members. In the last six months, we've had on average 108 new members per month. We're very fortunate that we have exceedingly low attrition rates of membership. In the 2009-10 report, it was noticed that we had a 1.4% drop in membership. However, we actually had a large proportion of members that rejoined the society in the same period of time. Although we have a very low attrition rate, we do know the four main areas where we lose members. One is um, through retirement, which is one of the biggest factors really, that members are retiring out of the profession. There are also members that are moving out of the profession into different areas. Another significant group are those that are emigrating abroad and no longer feel that they need to be part of the um, organisation. In the last few years, the cost of membership has also started to be an issue, and I think that's because of the impact of the recession. We have a very low attrition rate, but we still find that it's very important to contact members who leave our organisation to make sure that we know why they've left, if they're willing to tell us, and also to see you know, if we can make any improvements of that. 
For those that are unhappy with the service that they're provided, they are requested to let us know and they can contact the CEO who will give them a response. Since the largest number of members leaving is due to retirement, we have a retired members steering group which is seeking to make sure membership in retirement is an attractive and viable option. Steps really grown this year. Our target um, for membership growth was was three percent in our um, objectives, um, but we've reached eight point four percent for this year, um, which is brilliant. We've had campaigns in different areas to help achieve that growth, so it's really really flying um, in the key areas that we were targeting specifically. Um, our attrition rate is very low; it's three percent um, and has been for the last three years. Um, we're quite proud of that because we're not losing that many members and we're still growing at a phenomenal rate as well. Step members usually leave um, because they've retired. We have a small percentage that retire every year um, and we have some who leave the industry as well and choose to pursue a different career or move to a different country and can't pursue the same career as well. Some strategies and initiatives that we um, employ for attrition. Uh, we, um, after we switch some people off, if they haven't paid their subscription fee each year, we usually send a sorry to see you go email and ask them why they've left us, which obviously reminds people again that they haven't renewed and some people come back to us at that point or at least tell us why they're not renewing so we've got a better insight in that. Um, we've also done this year um, a little campaign so that people who didn't pay their subscription last year we wrote or emailed, emailed them to ask or just to mention that your membership's lapsed you know you can come back to us still so we've done a little campaign and got a few people back that way as that way as well so it's just little things that keep reminding people that their membership's not current if they haven't given us a reason if they have given us a reason obviously we're not going to keep bothering them but um, we still kind of look at ways we can market other products and services to them so people who don't continue their membership may still want to take our qualifications but for a different reason they might not want to maintain their membership For a fellow member, um, gives you the opportunity to really recognise all the hard work of your study towards the qualification. Um, it allows you to use the designatory letters MAAT if you're a full member, or FMAAT if you've achieved a higher level of membership, fellow membership with us. Um, it gives you a, a range of services and benefits that you have access to. It could be uh, money saving opportunities, it could be access to CP materials that are either available online or perhaps offline at events. Um, there's a range of support that goes behind uh, everything that we offer with our lobbying activities at a, a higher political level, um, as well as the support of a, of a worldwide organisation like the Association of Accounting Technicians. My main areas of responsibility at the AT are around developing uh, services for the AT members so that they actually have something they value towards their membership with us. Um, the main thing that they do value is their designatory letters after the name, which is MAAT for a full member or MAAT for a fellow member. Um, but my job is about developing further uh, resources that are added to that, to that um, uh, area of, of their membership. So it could be a savings scheme, uh, maybe offering cheap, cheap car insurance, home insurance, um, savings off high street brands, things like that. The key challenges in my role really are focused around learning and understanding what members actually want. Everything we do at the AAT is geared towards delivering um, benefits to the members and actually giving them something that's either tangible or even intangible that they can use and, and carry value towards their membership. Um, so really I'm focused on, on making sure that we are delivering stuff on a regular basis that members want, whether it's consistently the same material, the same stuff that they're looking looking for each year or actually something that's new and innovative for them to help them be better accountants, better in whatever position they're in um, or help them advance their career. It can be for a number of reasons why they join the AET. Um, first and foremost is probably to get those designatory letters after the name, that's how they get recognition amongst their, their colleagues and their peers and, and certainly for all the hard work that they've put in while studying for the actual qualification. Um, but there are a range of services and benefits that are available to them that without achievement for or fellow membership they wouldn't have access to. We offer members numerous benefits and services and we know from our surveys the ones that stand out as being the most valued. Um, of those there is professional indemnity insurance, um, the publications that we have, both our journals and our newsletters and our policy documents and guidance that can all be downloaded via our digital document library. 
And of course, nowadays it's really important to develop skills and we're seeing an increasing amount of work being undertaken for our CPD. We have an electronic CPD portfolio called CPD Now, which is accessed by a vast majority of our members and esteem has been very valuable. We provide lots of courses, workshops and education to improve skills and I think this is increasingly important now that there's a need to um, have evidence of CPD to keep registration with the HPC. Our members mainly join um, to gain the designation TEP, which is Trusted Estate Practitioner, and they're the letters that they can use after their name to distinguish them from other people and to clearly state that they are a specialist in that field, in the trust and estate field. Um, this is recognised internationally and our educational programmes are recognised internationally as well, so that's a really good draw for us. As we're a specialist um, kind of membership body just for the trust and estate area, um, I think our members value the, the information that we provide to them, so our newsletters that go out twice weekly provide some key updates on legislation um, and news in the field as well, um, So and our uh, monthly journal. Um, I think they really value certain knowledge um, that we send out to them.